and welcome to today's video. We're going to be looking at topics under the standard 1.2a and b in Algebra 2, which is also the topics in Study Island under the Polynomial and Radical Expressions lesson. So what, I'm, what I've done is I've pulled out questions from this lesson in Study Island that can be done straight on the TI-84 Plus calculator, and I'm going to show you how to do those. So not all of the questions in this lesson can be done on the calculator, but the ones that can, without using paper and pencil, I'm going to show you those. So as I'm going through these example questions, it's a great idea to be taking notes so you can use those notes to refer to when you are trying these problems on your own. So be sure to write down the steps of the buttons that I'm pressing so that you have that to reference. In these questions, we're going to be looking at polynomial and radical expressions that are being added, subtracted, multiplied, or divided. And as long as they have all the same variable in them, you can do them on the graph and calculator. So if I had x's and y's, I would have to be able to know how to do that paper and pencil. But if I just have x's, just have m's, just have t's, I can do it on the TI-85+. And so how this works is the question is going to have the exact same graph as the answer. So I'm going to go into y equals and clear out anything that's remaining from an old problem. And I'm going to type the question into y1 exactly as I see it. So I'm going to do parentheses 6x and I get x but from this button here right beside alpha. You can see it says x, t, alpha, n. I just press it once for an x. And then to get the fourth power, I'm going to use this caret button above the division. And that's going to pop the cursor up into an exponent. I'm going to put a 4 there. And since that's the end of the exponent, I'm going to right arrow out of it. And then do plus 8 x, caret button again, 3, right arrow minus 17x squared minus 7x in parenthesis plus negative 9 and be sure you use the negative button and not the minus button but I forgot the parenthesis so I'm going to go back and just do parenthesis negative 9 and correct that x caret button cubed right arrow plus 13x squared minus 9 in parenthesis. And then in y2, I'm going to scroll down there using the bottom arrow. I'm going to put in choice A. And I'm going to see if when I graph that, I get two of the exact same graph. If I don't, then I have to try choice B. And so on until I find a pair that has the exact same graph. So in y2, I'm going to put negative 3, once again making sure I use the negative button here and not the minus button. The calculator doesn't know the difference. And so I'm going to use x, caret button, 4, right arrow, plus 8x, caret button, 3, right arrow, minus 4x squared, minus 7x, minus 9. And so it's always a good idea to check that what you typed in is correct. And just to help us keep track of which one is the first graph and which one's the second graph, I'm going to use my left arrow to move the cursor in front of Y2. And once it's blinking in front of there, I'm going to press Enter once. And that's going to change it from graphing a skinny line to a thick line. So now I know that Y1 is being graphed as a thick line and Y2 is being graphed as a thin line. So I'm going to go ahead and graph it by pressing zoom and then option 6, which is zoom standard. And that tells me that I know from the beginning that my screen goes from negative 10 to positive 10 on both axes. So there's my first graph, the skinny line, and it's still graphing because it's moving. And then here's my second graph, the thick line. And you can see it doesn't go exactly over top of the thin line. They're two different graphs. And so A is not going to be my answer. So I'm going to repeat these steps with choice B. So I'm going to press Y equals, and I don't have to type it in again to Y1, but I'm going to clear it out of Y2, which changes it back to a skinny line. So I'm going to change it to a thick line. And then I'm going to type in 
ans the answer choice B. So that's going to be 6 X caret button 4 right arrow minus X caret button 3 right arrow minus 4 X squared minus 7 X minus 9. And so I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to press graph. And I'm going to see if I get the same graph. So there's my first one, the skinny line. It's over here. It's still moving, so I know that it's still thinking. And then there goes my thick line directly over top of it. So that means B is going to be my final answer since the question and the answer gave me the exact same graph. Multiplication is going to be done the exact same way. You're going to go into y equals, clear out anything that's left over from the last problem, and in y1, I'm going to type the question exactly how I see it. So parenthesis 2x minus 5, end parenthesis, beginning parenthesis, 2x plus 5, end parenthesis. And then in y2, I'm going to put answer choice A. So that's going to be 4x squared plus 20x minus 25. And then I'm going to go ahead and press zoom choice 6 standard so that I know that my screen is from negative 10 to positive 10 on both axes. And there I had forgotten to change my second graph to the thick line but I could see that it didn't graph right over top. But I can go ahead and change that to the thick line. If you forget to do that you can just go back and change it and then just press graph again and this time it'll graph it the first graph the skinny line and the second graph the thick line so now I can see for sure that A is not the correct answer because it was not the same exact graph and so now I'm going to go to choice B and do the same thing so I press Y equals and scroll down to Y2 and I can see I mean you can clear it out and type it all again but I can see from A to B the only thing that changed is this minus sign in front of the 20. So I'm just going to scroll over and change that plus to a minus by typing over it. And then because I use zoom standard and didn't change the window for the last one, I can press zoom standard again or I can just press graph and know I'll have that same window. So there's the first graph, the skinny line. And there's the second graph, the thick line. So once again, two different graphs, they don't trace over top of each other so B is not the answer so then I have to go try C and so here I'm gonna go ahead and just I'm gonna use the delete button here to delete everything after 4x squared and then I'm gonna type C in which is 4x squared minus 10 I'm gonna press graph and there's the skinny line the first graph and then there is the second graph the thick line so C isn't going to be my answer either, so when I go into Y equals and type D into Y2, I'm really hoping that that one gives me the exact same graph. So I went ahead and did that, and now I'm going to press graph. And once again, there's that first graph I'm pretty familiar with now in the skinny. And then D, my thick one, traces exactly over top of the first one. So that means D is going to be my final answer. Our next problem here is division, and that's going to be done the same way. And just I'm going to enter in a division problem instead of adding, subtracting, or multiplying like the first two. So in I'm going to go into y equals and clear out my old problem from y1 and y2. And now I can put a put this in as a fraction to get the fraction form to fill in. I'm going to have to go to math. So I click on math. And then I need to scroll over to number, so I'm going to right arrow over once. And then if I up arrow, that takes me to the bottom. And that very last choice, numerator over denominator, n over d, is what I need. So I'm going to press enter. And that gives me a fraction form to fill in. And so I'm going to do 4x squared minus 24x plus 36 on the top and then on the bottom I'm gonna put 2x minus 6 and then it's just like before I'm gonna put 
my answer, my first answer into y2 and give that a try. So into y2, I'm going to put answer a, which is 2x plus 6. And I'm going to change that first second graph to a thick line by scrolling in front of y2 and pressing enter once. That changes it to a thick line so that I can tell the difference on the graph. So now I'm going to press zoom standard. And there's my first graph, which is a skinny line. And there's my second graph, which is a thick line. They didn't trace on top of each other, so A is not going to be my final answer. So now I try B. So I go into Y equals, and for Y2, I type in 3X plus 5, and I press graph to see if this one traces on top of it. So there's my first graph in the skinny line, and there's my second graph, the thick line, and they don't overlap or trace, or then they are not the exact same graph, so B is not my answer, so now I try C. So I press Y equals, and in Y2, I'm going to have 2X minus 6, and so what I have typed in the Y2 looks like exactly like the answer, so I double checked it. I press graph, and there's my first graph in the skinny. And there's my second graph, the thick line traced right on top of the skinny line. So that means that C is going to be my final answer since the graph is exactly the same as the question. This next question just asks which of the following is equivalent to the complex fraction that you're given. And so the same thing holds true. The question and the answer are going to have the exact same graph. So I'm going to start off by going into y equals and clearing out my old problem. And I'm going to type this complex fraction, the question, into y1. So I'm going to have to get the fraction form again. So I'm going to press math, scroll to number, scroll up so that I have that last choice selected, n over d. And because I have a fraction over a fraction, I'm going to have to repeat that step to get a fraction, another fraction in the numerator. So I'm going to press math, right arrow number, up arrow, choice D, enter, and now I have a fraction in the numerator. So I'm going to put 6, but instead of putting M, I'm just going to change the M to X because the graphing calculator understands X and not M. And it's perfectly fine to change the letter as long as you're consistent. I'm going to put a 9 in the bottom, and then in my denominator here where the cursor is flashing, I need to put another fraction. So I'm going to go math, number, up arrow, enter, and that gets me another fraction here to fill in. And so that's going to be 42, but once again, instead of typing M, I'm going to type X, over 54. And I have my complex fraction typed into Y1. So now in Y2, I'm going to type choice A and see if that gives me two of the exact same graphs. So once again, instead of typing M, I'm going to type X. And so I need to go and get a fraction first, so I'm going to type math, scroll over to number, up arrow, enter, and there I'm going to have x squared in the numerator, and then down arrow to the denominator and put a 6, and I'm going to go ahead and graph them. Um, to help myself out though, I'm going to put my cursor, I'm going to use the right arrow to get the cursor in front of y2, and I'm going to press enter once to once again change it so this second one graphs a thick line and this first one graphs a skinny line. And now I'm going to kind of press zoom standard, and there's my first graph, the nice skinny line, and there's my second graph. Those are definitely not the same graph, so I'm going to go into y equals and try choice b. And so here, I just, I'm going to delete this, and I'm just going to have x over 14. And then I'm going to go ahead and try graphing that to see if I get the same answer. So there's my first graph, the skinny line, and there's my second graph, the thick line. Those are not the exact same graph, they don't trace, so b is not my answer. So now I'm going to try c. I'm going to go into y equals and put a 7 in the numerator. And in the denominator, I'm going to put a 6, and I'm going to press graph to see if those give me the exact same graph. So here's my first graph, nice and skinny, and there's my second graph, the thick line, going exactly over top of it. So that means Z, letter C here is going to be my final answer. 
Thank you for joining us today, and I hope you learned something new.